What's up guys, Nick here from Dirt Bike Trails starting my CR500 project. This is the motor out of a 97 CR500. I bought this bike, it was just in pieces. The motor was just in a box. And uh, three months later I've gone through and verified I've got everything, everything I don't have, I've purchased. I have uh, Cerakoted the cases and time to start building it. All right, so the first thing to do in assembly is to get the bearings into these cases that I've got cleaned up and Cerakoted. So I purchased this oven on uh, homedepot.com to Cerakote the cases. So I'm using it, heating them up to 350 degrees and then I've got all these bearings and I'm pack, packing them in dry ice. And uh, I let the bearings cool down and the, and the cases heat up for, I don't know, half an hour or something. Get them up to 350 degrees. And I was so surprised how easy this is. Look, it just drops right in like that. Sometimes, sometimes it gives give you the feeling like, oh, did it go in? But, you know, you can just tap it a little, little bit and make sure that it goes into your satisfaction. Some of the bearings have these little retaining clips you gotta put in there and uh, just a little bit of Loctite blue to make sure that those just stay in there forever. The seals I found were a little bit more tricky. I thought I'd be able to just push them in by hand, but no, can't do that. So I grabbed just a little hunk of metal and pressed them in there with a the clamp. It wasn't going in perfectly straight at first, so I had to move it around to uh, try and get it in there you know, as flat as I could. I used a Maxima assembly lube pretty much all over on this thing to just make sure, just make sure that everything went together as smoothly as possible. Now I would like to note and uh, give credit where credit's due. In the process of uh, obtaining this engine and, and learning more about it, I became friends with uh, a really great guy up in northern Utah named Josh. This guy is like a CR500 sensei, I tell you what. He knows everything that there is to know about him. And he just took me under his wing and was generous with his time and teaching me about it. And I'm really grateful to him for that. All right, so I'm about ready to put the put the crank into the into the case, and I want to heat up this uh, inner race on this bearing, and I've got the crank in the dry ice, so I'm going to put a hot socket on this inner race and let it warm it up for like five minutes or so. All right, kind of a big moment. Take off the hot socket and let's see if I can do this. <laughs> like nothing. There it goes. There it goes. I picked up this engine stand from Rocky Mountain. Um, I can't imagine doing this without something like this. This one's just so handy because you can just rotate the engine any which way that you want to put it. It's really handy. The gears, just put them together how they are supposed to go, slide them in, and there you go. Rotate that up. I've always wondered what is going on inside a transmission when I'm shifting. Um, and this was a really good education for me to see how it all works and exactly everything that's going on on the inside. And, you know, seeing this shift drum go in and then the forks that slide into them, yeah, well, that engage with it and move around, it is totally mind-blowing to see. I mean, whoever came up with this, it's pretty freaking awesome. So I had some difficulty trying to make it shift cleanly. I got the shift shafts in there and I was trying to just work it the way it was supposed to go and I couldn't get it to shift correctly. So what I did was I took Took it all back apart and I noticed that I was missing a little washer, a little washer like this. And so found where that was missing from and put it back in there. And I don't know if it was that, but I was missing it and maybe just put it all back together. But now it works perfectly. It just goes through the gears and 
it's totally cool. So now I just gotta get the dowel pins on and then throw some grease on the gasket surface and then join the cases. So this is just a little bit of anti-seize lube that I'm putting on these dowel pins uh, just to make sure, because this is probably one of those things that's most likely to seize up when you're trying to take the engine back apart. And then as you see the grease on the gasket surfaces, that I believe is to help that to make a better seal, but also to help you in case there's an un un unfortunate event you have to take the cases back apart, they're not gonna be totally stuck stuck to the cases so you can get it apart without ripping it. Okay, so before I press the other case over this, uh, over the crank, I wanna cool it down. Instead of freezing the whole crank, because obviously it's installed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this cup over the crank, the crankshaft, and then fill it with dry ice. So I think that this dry ice idea worked okay. Um, and I mean, it of course did have an effect of cooling down the, the shaft, but I don't know if there's a better way out there to do this. Um, but I was able to join the cases, but it, it wasn't without a little bit of difficulty. When I uh, joined these cases, I didn't have a crankshaft puller, which would have been great to be able to just squeeze these together. I uh, just used some clamps and you know, just tightening down on the case bolts very carefully, only with my only with my hands to make sure I didn't over tighten those. And I just kept doing that until I couldn't fit a razor blade between the cases, and then I felt like it was there. That's it. Talk back is Barbara Pull. Oh, there it went. The case just. <laughs> well guys thanks for watching this first video on this cr 500 project that i'm starting i don't know what kind of uh past this motor had but i'm trying to give it a a new bright future in the next video i'll be uh, installing the gear shifting mechanism and the clutch and getting the bottom end all buttoned up